Hey guys, how's it going? Long time no see. I hope you all are safe and are doing well. As I'm sure with many of you, I've been stuck at home with plenty of time on my hands to experiment and play with some things inside of Helix. So in today's video, I have a couple tips slash techniques that might help you yield better results getting some guitar tones out of your Helix. I've also compiled a quick little list of some of my go-to IRs that I use in order to get up and running with tones right away. So why don't I grab my guitar, let's jump in HX Edit and take a look. If you're into guitars, metal riffage, mixing, and everything in between, hit subscribe and follow along. Okay, so we're over here, we're in HX Edit, and the first thing I'm going to show you is something that one of the, my viewers kind of pointed out to me that I hadn't really taken a look at since I've had my Helix. And that is on the input block, if you will, for your Helix. We are inside of my Helix rack, uh, firmware version 2.82. And as I've shown in some of my videos, and many of you may already know, this first sort of input block, if you will, can... Uh, I have my input gate enabled, as I usually do. It's nice, kind of saves you a block. But there, down here, you can see that there is this guitar in dash Z. And there's an adjustment you can make, and that is controlling basically the impedance or the load that is put on your pickups. Now, since I've had my Helix, I've just had this on auto, just assuming that it was doing exactly what it needed to do. And then it was recommended to me by a viewer that I take a look at what a difference it might make if I were to adjust these settings. So this is my dual amp tone setup. I believe this is, yep. And um, like I said, I have it on auto, so I'll just play real quick. This is what it sounds like. <laughs> Cool. Sounds good to me. Now, if we adjust this, there it, it ranges from 10k ohm all the way up to 1 milli ohm, which is I'm assuming it's that's what it means. 1 milli ohm. Don't quote me. Um, now let's put it all the way up and listen to what it does. <laughs> Back to auto. All the way up. Definitely brighter and a little bit tighter just by changing that. Auto. So as you can hear, it really kind of opens up the tone of the guitar. And if we take a look at the Helix Rack user manual, this is what it says. Helix has an impeded circuit on its guitar input that affects tone and feel by loading your guitar's pickups as they would by an effect pedal or amplifier. A lower value will typically result in some high frequency attenuation, so rolling off high ends, lower gain, and an overall softer feel. A higher value provides full frequency response, higher gain, and an overall tighter feel. So that is exactly what's happening with this. Now if we turn it down to the lowest. Sounds like we rolled back the, the volume knob on my guitar. Put it all the way up. So that is definitely something you're going to want to take a look at, is adjusting the impedance and see if it either improves 
your tone or if it has some sort of effect on it, it's definitely something you're gonna to wanna to take a look at. So I'm glad that that was pointed out to me. The second thing I wanna to wanna to show you is uh, some EQ moves that I've been doing. And uh, this is nothing new for a lot of you, I'm sure, but I feel like I've been having some good success with this. So what I have here is two EQ blocks and they're both sort of kind of doing some overall sculpting of my tone. So let's listen to what we're working with. <laughs> Now I'll turn these off. Still sounds good, but we lost a little bit of the high end shimmer and we got a little bit of flub happening with my palm mutes. So what I'm doing here is I am adding a low and high shelf EQ block. That's something that was added probably at this point several updates ago. Now basically what I'm doing here um, is setting a couple shelves. So I have a low gain shelf and a high gain shelf. You can set the frequency. So my low gain shelf is set at 200 hertz and I'm subtracting half a dB. So what that means is, for those of you that don't know, at 200 hertz and below, I'm cutting a half a dB. So we're not doing any major notching. We're just lowering the overall gain below 200 hertz. And for the high gain, I have it set to 5K and I'm boosting one dB. So everything above 5K is up one dB. Let's listen to before. Now with it. Definitely got some shimmer and it's tightening up that low end just a little bit. I could probably go a little bit further, but this is the setting I kind of ended up with. And this in conjunction with my next EQ block is kind of where I landed. And then this next one is really cool. It is a tilt EQ. And again, these have been in Helix for a while and I've just had the time to kind of play around and experiment. And what a tilt EQ is, it's basically if you take the, the EQ band across your entire guitar, at a certain frequency, it's basically boosting and lowering, like a, like a seesaw almost. And my center frequency is at 1K. So what is that meaning? At 1K, since I'm at bright 4, I'm brightening everything up above 1K, but also dipping down everything below 1K. And it works in tandem. And again, those frequencies aren't being notched out, so you still have all those same frequencies, but it's just kind of, you have a little more control so you can control the low end a little bit more. Now I have it relatively high at 1K, but that's where I landed and that's what I felt sounded good. Let's play before I add it, that's on, okay. Now I'll add it in. Now, you're probably thinking like, I can't hear any difference at all. If you're listening on your phone, like what's the point, first of all? Why are you just listening on your phone? Throw some decent headphones on or listen to some studio monitors so you can really hear these nuance. Now, as I'm sure I've explained with mixes and stuff, it's little details that add up to be a big difference. And both of these EQ moves are not drastic on their own and they're subtle, but if you combine them, you get an overall better sounding tone in my opinion. This is with my EQ moves off. Now with them on. I think it's closer to a record ready tone, you know, 
with some of these EQ moves now, that's less I'm going to have to do in my DAW, which is ultimately going to make things easier in the long run. <laughs> Those are some new EQ things I've been playing around with. Again, tweak to taste, experiment, check them out, see if you even need these moves. I just like how they sound. I like the combination of these two. Might be overkill for some of you, but I'm, I was digging it. So now let's move on to the handful of IRs I like to use to kind of get myself started when it comes to building tones. And um, first I'm gonna start with the one I'm using in this patch, which is uh, first, I mean, let me preface this by saying these are all Ownhammer IRs. It's what I prefer. I am not sponsored by Ownhammer. Uh, I just always end up using Ownhammer IRs because, in my opinion, they work best for what I'm kind of trying to achieve. So your mileage may vary. You might be uh, digging how some of the other ones sound. It just, this doesn't mean that these are any better necessarily, but for my ears, this is what I prefer. So let's start off with the one I have in this patch. It is from the Zilla Massively Microphone Collection, Massive Multi-Mic Collection. There we go. The Massive Multi-Microphone Collection for the 412 Zilla. And it is based on a Zilla 4x12, okay? And they have, I believe, four different cabs, if you will. It might be the same cab, but each of them has uh, a different grill, a weave of a different grill. They, they took IRs of of that. So this one happens to be basket weave clothed grill. You wouldn't think, but it does. The type of grill, the absence of a grill, makes a difference in IR capture and how it sounds. And that's the case when you're miking a cab up in real life as well. So the one I have in this patch currently is the OH412ZLBW. The ZLBW refers to the Zilla with this particular cloth grill. Um, V30, meaning it's uh, Celestion V30 speakers, and the R121-00. The R21 means a Royer 121 uh, microphone, which is a ribbon microphone, of course. And the dash zero zero meaning it's the closest to the grill. So the, basically the way Ownhammer explains it is zero zero is the brightest and closest, and 10 would be the darkest and further further out from the sweet spot. So this is right, this is the brightest and closest using the Royer 121. That's the one I have loaded. I love the Zilla 412. The own hammer pack for the Zilla 412 is great. I love it. And I have two more that I'm going to talk about, but now let's kind of go into the five IRs that I use in a rotation to kind of get stuff started, okay? So let's go here. The first one is one that I, I used for a long time, and it's still one of my go-tos. It is Based on the Mesa Boogie Traditional Straight 4x12, it is the OH412TRAD V70 121-00. Like I said, based on a traditional Straight 4x12 by Mesa, using 70 watt Celestion Vintage 30 speakers, the R21 or the 121 is referring to the Royer 121 ribbon mic, like we just like the microphone before. I kind of gravitate towards that microphone in IRs. And the dash 00, again, 00 being the closest. 10 being the furthest away from the sweet spot, zero, 00 is the brightest. So this is the brightest one of that. Definitely a more in-your-face, straight-up metal tone with this cab. Cool. So I, that's a great one to start with. Let it be known that I have the high cut down to 14K. So if I take that off. Not a huge difference. But it's taken off some of that hair. So just let it be known that I do have the that on. The next one is based on the Orange PPC 212 2x12 by Orange. It's a 212 cab. It has 
uh, Celestion V30 speakers as well. And it's using a Bear Dynamics M160 ribbon mic. So this is how that one sounds. <laughs> Definitely some more mids. But a great sound to it. Let's take off the high pass for the high cut. Not doing a ton. So that one again is the OH212 ORNG V30 160 06. So, like I said before, those previous two were dash zero zero, meaning the closest. This is dash 06, meaning it's a little bit past halfway in regards to the distance and the darkness being from, you know, the sweet spot. <laughs> Another one of my favorites. So the next one we're going to go to is the OH-412 UBKR T75 OH-2F. Now this one is based on a 2002 rear-loaded Bogner Uber Cab 412. It is loaded with 1991 T3760 Skunk Stripe G12 T75 speakers. I've always loved a T75 speaker because it's very mid-centric sounding. It's a very tight sounding speaker. This IR is awesome. It's definitely one I'm, I've been bouncing between some of the other, like the one that's in this patch and this one, depending on like which one is my favorite. <laughs> I just feel like it's very even across the entire spectrum. Tight on the low end, good chime. All right, so what does all that jargon mean? Um, the T75 is, return, is referring to the speaker. The OH2F, a combination of a 421 Telefunken MD421, it's a dynamic microphone, and the Royer R121. So again, I, I just, I can't get away from that microphone. I like how it sounds. That in combination with the dynamic mic just makes it sound, I mean, great the way it sounds. You can hear it. To me, it sounds good. Uh, the OH2F means it's a, f the, the F means it's a, fatter mix of these two. There's two different mixes, OH2 and OH2F. It's nice that they have a, a mix already for you of these two microphones. Now let's go to the next one. The next one is, now we are back into two more Zilla IRs from the same pack. This is the OH412 ZLCS V30 C67-M+. What does that mean? This is, um, like I was explaining, they captured the 412 Zilla cab with different grills. This one has a different grill than the first one. It's a small weave white can clothed grill. It is loaded with 1999 Celestion T3904 vintage 30 speakers. So again, something that's kind of using vintage 30 speakers or a T75 in most of these. And it's using a Neumann U67 with a vacuum tube internal preamp. So this is this one. Kind of harkening back to that T75 speaker, um, very mid-centric, it rolls off the lows nice, it's got a nice roll off on the high end, got, still has that chime, 
and the low end is tight. I'm always looking as to how IRs and amps handle palm mutes. Just if it's something pleasing to me, then I'm on board. And I like the way this handles. So let's go back to that T75 real quick. Compare it. So T75 is a little more in your face, but there's something pleasing and, and wonderful about this cab. I mean, it's, again, the same cab, different grill, same speakers. Just that, something about that Neumann microphone that's pleasing. Again, so that one's in my rotation. And the M Plus, let me break down the name for you. The OH412, 412, 412 cabinet, ZLCS is referring to the small weave cloth grill. The vintage, the V30 is, is referring to the vintage 30s. In this case, the 1999 Celestion T3904 vintage 30 speaker. C67 is referring to the Neumann U67 with the vacuum tube preamp. <laughs> Still has that high end chime, tight low end, a little bit mid focused, obviously, it being a mid focused IR. <laughs> Pleasing palm mutes to me. Cool. And the last IR I turn to is another IR from that same Zilla 412 pack. It is the same small white weave clothed grill, same vintage 30 speaker. But this is a combination of two microphones. It's a combination of the AKG 414, which is one of my favorite mics to mic up a cab in real life, and a Shure KSM 313. So how does that sound? <laughs> Pleasing palm mutes, chimey top end. I know a lot of these, these cabs have the same kind of character, but that's why I put this together. I basically wanted to have just a handful. So we have six IRs that I turn to that I put in a folder so that when I'm experimenting and building new patches and trying to come up with tones, I'm not overwhelmed by the, the vast amount of IRs I have. This, this, this list is based on speakers I like, mics I know I like, placements I like, and it just kind of just keeps me from spending too much time as opposed to writing, recording, and building a tone. Um, so I kind of find that this really helps me narrow things down. And then if I want to further explore some more mic options, I can do that. I have all the IRs still, of course, but this just saves me time and energy. All appropriate links down below in the description, including links to my music, and if you dig what I'm putting down, hit subscribe and follow along. So I know there was a lot of jargon, mumbo jumbo with all those IRs, but I just, the point was like, find some IRs that you're happy with. Even if you have hundreds, I would recommend finding a handful that you can go to and just keep yourself from wasting too much time in searching for the perfect IR. Because even for me, you might never find it. These again are based on microphones I like, speakers I like, cabs I like, placements I like. And then you kind of go from there. I've spent the time to kind of stumble upon these and find these. And this is just going to save you some time and 
basically allow you more time to create and write music, which is the point of all this, I think. So I hope some of these tips at the beginning were helpful, the EQ moves that I've kind of been playing with, and then the idea of maybe batching aside a few IRs to work with instead of overwhelming yourself with too many choices. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you're all doing well. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks to those of you who are already supporting me on Patreon. It means the world to me that you're willing to part with a few bucks a month just to help support me and the channel. And to you Helix nerds out there, I do have a tier in which I provide a monthly Helix patch. And if you're looking for other ways to support me and the channel and help the channel grow, I do have music for sale over on Bandcamp, as well as anywhere music can be sold. And of course, everything is available on all major streaming services. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you're all doing well and staying safe. We'll see you in the next one.